The air tasted different that morning, an alchemical blend of dew and pine that I'd grown to cherish. The forest beckoned me like an old friend. The crunch of my hiking boots against the path was a familiar melody in the symphony of nature. It was a beautiful, crisp spring day, perfect for my solitary trek. I was an avid hiker, always craving the solitude of the woods over the tumult of city life. Today's destination was an uncharted route, untouched by man, teeming with its verdant allure. As I ventured deeper into the forest, the dappled sunlight played tricks with my eyes, casting long, eerie shadows in between the towering conifers. There was an ancient feeling that hung heavy in the air, an aura of a timeless, undisturbed tranquility, which sent an uncanny shiver down my spine. I shook it off, attributing my unease to the unfamiliar trail. I continued my journey, the twittering of unseen birds and the rustling of leaves underfoot my only companions. I encountered a small creek, its waters murmuring a lullaby to the rocks it kissed. I paused for a moment, soaking in the tranquil melody of nature before pressing onward. As I ventured deeper into the wilderness, a feeling of isolation began to creep over me, each stride taking me farther away from the world I knew. The air grew colder, the sunlight less forgiving. A thick mist started to roll in, cloaking the trees in a haunting veil of mystery. Suddenly, the chorus of woodland critters fell to a disquieting silence. An inexplicable tension gripped the air. I froze, my senses heightened, my heart pounding in my chest. Straining my ears for any sign of danger, my attention was caught by a rustling sound behind me. Slowly I turned, and my breath hitched in my throat. There, at the edge of my vision, was a deer. It was alarmingly large, its powerful frame oddly distorted, and its antlers were gnarled, looking more like branches of an ancient dead tree. Its fur was an unnatural hue, a sickly shade of gray, matted and patchy. But its eyes, those eyes were what struck the deepest chord of fear within me. They were not the usual warm brown of a deer, but a piercing icy blue, glowing ominously in the foggy light. There was an eerie intelligence in them, an unnatural awareness that no deer should possess. It was as if it was looking right through me, understanding me, studying me. I felt like prey, exposed and vulnerable under its chilling gaze. A bolt of primal fear shot through me. My mind screamed at me to flee, but I was frozen in place, ensnared by the deer's intense scrutiny. It took a step closer, a low, guttural growl resonating from its chest, sending a fresh wave of terror crashing over me. Suddenly, it reared on its hind legs, an action so profoundly disturbing, so opposite of what nature ordained, that my mind reeled in disbelief. Its growl deepened into a haunting, otherworldly sound that echoed through the forest, silencing the remaining whispers of nature. In my fear-induced paralysis, I managed to fumble for my camera. As if knowing what I was doing, the deer paused. Its terrifying gaze locked onto me as I snapped a photograph, its eyes reflecting a horrifying glow. Then, as abruptly as it had appeared, the deer turned and vanished into the thick undergrowth. The forest seemed to exhale, releasing me from my paralyzing fear. My heart pounded in my chest as I tried to comprehend what had just happened. There was no logic, no rational explanation that could account for such an encounter. With trembling hands, I glanced at the photograph on my camera, hoping it might shed some light on this mystery. The image on the screen made my blood run cold. There, in the captured frame, was the deer, its eyes glaring with an unnatural light. But what made my heart skip a beat was the faint, shadowy figures looming in the background, figures that I hadn't noticed before, looking eerily human, but distorted, just like the deer. The forest, once my sanctuary, now seemed like a den of nightmares. A chill ran down my spine as I realized that I was not alone in this wilderness and the entity I had encountered was far from natural. It felt as if the forest was holding its breath, hiding darker secrets within its silent depths. As the light of day began to ebb away, I knew one thing for certain. I needed to get out of the forest before night fell, because there was something out there in the wilderness, something that didn't want me there, and I had a feeling that it would stop at nothing to ensure that I never set foot in its realm again. As I stood there, my heart pounding in my chest, I had to fight the urge to drop my camera and run. The instinctual part of me, the part that reacted to danger, was screaming to flee, but my rational mind was holding me back, trying to make sense of what I had just witnessed. 
In an attempt to calm myself, I took a deep breath, the once comforting scent of pine now tainted with a hidden dread. The silence of the forest seemed to close in around me, each creak of a branch or rustle of a leaf sending me into a state of high alert. Suddenly, a guttural roar echoed through the forest, freezing my blood. It was the same otherworldly sound I had heard from the deer, but it was closer now, too close. Without thinking I turned and bolted, my body acting on pure, primal fear. I sprinted through the dense undergrowth, branches whipping against my face as I pushed forward, my lungs burning for air. The fog had thickened now, obscuring my path. The forest had turned into an impenetrable labyrinth, an endless expanse of shadows and mist. Every step I took seemed to take me deeper into the forest. The familiar trail was nowhere in sight. Suddenly my foot caught on a hidden root, sending me sprawling to the ground. A sharp pain shot through my ankle, but fear was a powerful motivator. Ignoring the pain, I picked myself up and kept moving. I could still hear the sound of my pursuer in the distance, a chilling reminder of the terror that lurked in the shadows. I could feel the forest watching me, its gaze as haunting as the deer's. Every rustle of the leaves, every snap of a twig echoed like a predator's growl in my terrified mind. As I hobbled on, a glimmer of hope pierced through the heavy mist. Up ahead, I could see the faint outline of a cabin, an old ranger station that had been abandoned for years. My heart pounded with a mix of relief and fear, relief at the prospect of shelter and fear of what might be waiting for me inside. But I had no choice. I needed to take that chance. Summoning my last reserves of strength, I pushed on, my heart hammering in my chest, the roars in the distance growing louder, closer. The door of the cabin was slightly ajar. I rushed in, shutting the door behind me with a deafening bang. I was enveloped by darkness, the only light filtering in through the cracks in the boarded up windows. The cabin smelled of damp wood and decay, the scent of abandonment. I tried to steady my ragged breathing straining my ears for any sound outside. The forest was unnaturally quiet. As I slumped down against the door, my heart still pounding, I knew I was far from safe. But for the moment, I was hidden from the horrors that lurked in the woods. My hands trembled as I looked at the last photograph I had taken, the shadowy figures looming ominously. Whatever was out there was not just in the forest, it was part of the forest. As darkness fell, I knew I was trapped in a nightmare that was far from over. My only hope was to survive the night, to confront whatever was waiting for me with the break of dawn. Until then, I was a prisoner in my own fear, surrounded by the unknown terrors of the forest. The cabin, despite its decrepit state, provided an illusion of safety that was too precious to ignore. The dust-laden air was stale, and the musty scent of old wood filled my nostrils. After I'd caught my breath, I set about making the cabin as secure as possible. I found an old, rotten table which I pushed against the door, the wood creaking ominously under the strain. I sealed the cracked windows as best as I could with old, moth-eaten curtains I found tucked away in a corner. Every sound I made seemed magnified in the oppressive silence, a stark reminder of my isolation. My ankle throbbed with a persistent pain, but the adrenaline rush had kept the worst of it at bay. I found an old rag and wrapped it around the swelling wincing as the pressure amplified the pain momentarily. The eerie quiet of the forest was periodically pierced by that haunting guttural roar, chilling my blood each time. Each roar seemed closer, a morbid countdown to an encounter I dreaded. My mind whirred with thoughts of escape, of survival, but my body was too drained, too battered to comply. I was trapped, and I had no choice but to face whatever was coming. As the day gave way to a moonless night, the cabin was plunged into an inky darkness. The only light came from the screen of my camera, casting long, frightening shadows that danced on the old wooden walls. It was in this forbidding atmosphere that I spent the longest night of my life. Every creak of the cabin, every rustle of the wind against the window panes, every whisper of the forest sent my heart racing. Time seemed to crawl as I sat there in the darkness, my senses on high alert, straining to pick up any sign of danger. Despite the dread gnawing at me, exhaustion began to take hold. My eyelids felt heavy, and my body screamed for rest. But the fear of what lurked outside kept me awake, my every nerve tingling with a fearful anticipation. In the depth of the night, something changed. 
The roars ceased, replaced by a haunting silence that was somehow more terrifying. It was the calm before a storm, the final breath before the plunge. A shiver ran down my spine as I braced myself for what was to come. Suddenly a low growl echoed through the cabin sending a jolt of fear through me. It was here. With trembling hands I picked up my camera, ready to document whatever was about to happen. And then I heard it, the unmistakable sound of hooves against the forest floor, slow and deliberate. Each step was like a hammer blow to my already fragile courage. I could hear the creature circling the cabin, its growl a constant echo in the stillness of the night. As I sat there trapped and helpless waiting for the dawn to break, I understood one thing. I was not just a visitor in this forest. I was a trespasser in a realm that belonged to something ancient, something terrifying, and it was coming to claim what was its own. The beast's growls faded into the night, a chilling lullaby in the unforgiving darkness. The cabin seemed to hold its breath, the eerie quiet stretching into what felt like an eternity. My heart pounded in my chest like a war drum, my blood running cold with every haunting echo of hooves against the forest floor. As I sat huddled in the corner, camera gripped in sweaty palms, I couldn't shake off the feeling of being watched. It was as if the creature could see through the walls, its icy gaze piercing through the darkness and into the heart of my fear. I was trapped, a mouse cornered by an unseen cat, waiting for the pounce. After what seemed like an eternity, the first rays of dawn timidly crept in through the cracks in the boarded up windows. I had survived the night. My body ached with fatigue and fear, and my injured ankle throbbed with a renewed vengeance. But I was alive. The forest, however, didn't share in my relief. It remained quiet, its silence far from comforting. The creature was still out there, waiting, watching. Gathering what little strength I had left, I pushed the table away from the door and cautiously stepped out into the new day. The forest was eerily beautiful in the morning light, its terrifying secrets cloaked under a facade of normalcy. The path leading out of the forest seemed to mock me with its apparent simplicity. All I had to do was walk out, but I knew it wasn't that simple. The forest was still holding its breath, its unseen guardians ready to pounce at the slightest provocation. The camera felt heavy in my hand, a constant reminder of the nightmare that still lingered. With trembling fingers I scrolled through the photographs I had taken. Each one was a chilling snapshot of the horror I had endured, but it was the last image that sent a wave of icy terror crashing over me. There, standing behind the monstrous deer, were more of the shadowy figures. But they weren't just looming now, they were advancing, stepping out from the safety of the shadows and into the ghostly glow of the deer's eyes. Their distorted forms looked twisted and grotesque, the forest reflecting its own malice onto them. A realization hit me like a bolt of lightning. The forest was alive. It was conscious, aware of my presence, my fear, and it was hungry, eager to consume the unwelcome intruder. Fear, however, had done its job. It had kept me alive through the night, and it would guide me out of the forest. But first, I had to face the forest and its guardians. They had stalked me, haunted me, and now it was time for our final confrontation. I took a step forward my every sense on high alert. The forest seemed to shudder in anticipation, its silent whispers growing louder. But I was not going to back down, not after everything I had been through. With a renewed determination, I started my journey out of the forest, the camera clenched tightly in my hand, ready to capture the final act of this terrifying drama. As I moved deeper into the forest, towards the path that led out, I knew one thing for certain. The forest was watching, and it was waiting. The walk back to the path was a trek unlike any other I'd experienced. The sun had begun its climb into the sky, but the forest remained cloaked in an eerie half-light. Every rustle of leaves, every bird call, seemed to carry a warning. The forest was communicating, the voices in the silence whispering of an impending climax. A chilling wind swept through the undergrowth, its icy fingers ruffling the leaves and sending shivers down my spine. I could still feel the piercing gaze of the unknown, watching me from the depths of the wilderness. I was not alone. I was never alone. The forest and its chilling inhabitants were my constant companions. In the distance, the silhouette of the monstrous deer emerged from the shadows. It stood there, 
its unnerving blue eyes fixated on me, a silent challenge hanging in the air. Behind it, the distorted figures swayed ominously, their shadowy forms becoming more tangible, more real with every passing second. It was the moment of reckoning. Summoning my remaining courage, I raised the camera, capturing this final standoff. The flash seemed to momentarily startle the creature, its eyes narrowing as a low growl escaped its lips. Without breaking eye contact, I took a step back, then another, creating distance between us. The deer remained still, its gaze never leaving me. Behind it, the shadowy figure swayed as if caught in an invisible wind. Slowly, ever so slowly, I began to walk backward, keeping my focus on the deer. The growling ceased, replaced by an eerie silence that sent chills down my spine. It felt like an eternity before I finally saw the trail, the safe passage leading out of the forest. It was within my reach, and then, something miraculous happened. As my boot touched the path, a beam of sunlight pierced through the canopy, casting a golden glow around me. In the brilliance of the sunlight, the deer and its eerie companions began to fade, becoming translucent, their terrifying forms melting into the morning fog. I took a step onto the path, my heart pounding in my chest. As I moved further into the sunlight, the forest seemed to exhale, the whispering silence gradually replaced by the natural sounds of the wilderness. The ominous presence that had plagued me was fading, the forest releasing me from its supernatural hold. I didn't dare look back until I was out of the forest, bathed in the safety of the morning sun. I was greeted by the sight of a normal forest, its monstrous inhabitants nowhere to be seen. As I limped towards my car, parked at the trailhead, I couldn't shake off the feeling of eyes on me. Turning around, I saw the deer one last time, standing at the edge of the forest, its form no longer terrifying but majestic, its eyes not a haunting blue but a warm brown. The shadowy figures were gone leaving behind just an ordinary deer. With a final nod, it turned and vanished into the forest, leaving behind silence. Looking down at my camera, I realized it held evidence of the terrifying ordeal, a testament to the uncharted supernatural wilderness. But as I scrolled through the images, I found them changed. The deer was as it should be, the shadowy figures absent, the forest looking ordinary. It was as if the forest had reclaimed its secrets, leaving behind only the memories etched into my mind. As I drove away, the forest returned to its splendid isolation, its terrifying secrets hidden once again under the facade of natural beauty. I was left with an unsettling respect for the wilderness and the unknown entities it shielded from the human realm. There are some places where man is merely a visitor, some realms where we are the aliens. I had seen one such place and lived to tell the tale. As the fear subsided, replaced by relief, I knew one thing for certain, the forest was alive, and it was watching, and having tasted its wrath once, I was content to admire it from a respectful distance, a silent agreement between man and nature. I was finally free from the haunting grasp of the forest, carrying an experience that would echo through the rest of my life. I'd never been much of a superstitious person, but after my camping experience in the Navajo Reservation in Utah, my skepticism eroded like dust before a gale. The expansive red plains were a sight to behold. I'd always had a soft spot for camping, relishing the isolation that nature provided. The reservation was expansive, picturesque, and suffused with ancient heritage. Before I set up camp, I made sure to respectfully ask the tribal elders for their blessings keen on respecting their traditions. They had agreed, but the stern elder had warned me of their sacred laws. Don't wander after dark and never respond to voices you may hear. This land carries the spirit of the skinwalkers. Laughing off their cautionary tales of shape-shifting witches known as skinwalkers, I set up my camp near the stunning red rocks, completely ignorant of what lay ahead. That evening, the setting sun spilled golden hues across the horizon, and as darkness descended, a veil of stars unraveled overhead. A symphony of nocturnal creatures began their chorus, and I sat by the fire, succumbing to the tranquil ambiance. As the fire flickered, I remember feeling a distinct change in the air. The cricket songs fell silent, leaving the forest in an eerie stillness. A cold breeze swept through, raising goosebumps on my skin. 
Suddenly, a low guttural growl echoed from the darkness. Dismissing it as a coyote, I stoked the fire, attempting to instill a sense of security through its warm light. I remember feeling watched, an unshakable sense of dread enveloping me like a shroud. My heart pounded in my chest, reverberating an unsettling rhythm in my ears. I decided to retreat to my tent, assuming sleep would silence my escalating anxiety. My sleep was punctuated by nightmares, grotesque figures chasing me through the unforgiving desert, their cries mingling with my own panicked gasps. I awoke with a start, sweat trickling down my forehead. The quiet hum of the desert night had returned, but something felt wrong. A sense of impending doom hung in the air, palpable and heavy. I reached for my flashlight, the beam cutting through the thick darkness. I ventured outside my tent, sweeping the light over the nearby trees. I nearly dropped the flashlight when it landed on a pair of gleaming eyes, reflecting an unsettling glow. The figure was partly concealed by the darkness, but I could make out its lean form, standing on two legs, yet undeniably not human. A low growl reverberated through the silence, a chilling echo of the sound I'd heard earlier. Panic washed over me as the figure moved, its motions bizarrely distorted. I watched in petrified disbelief as it dropped on all fours and began to advance towards me. In the dim glow of the flashlight I saw its skin, a grotesque parody of human flesh stretched tightly over its skeletal frame. The stories of the skinwalker rushed back to me in a horrifying wave. The elders' warnings echoed in my head, their stern faces looming in my mind's eye. Against every instinct screaming at me to flee, I remembered their advice. I must not respond or acknowledge it. The creature began to call my name in a voice almost identical to my mother's, who had passed away years ago. Its tone was soft, almost pleading. Each syllable twisted the knife of terror deeper into my psyche, and I had to bite my lip to prevent any sound from escaping. With shaky hands I withdrew into my tent, zipping it shut. The creature's calls persisted, growing louder, angrier. Its voice shifted between those I knew, my father, my childhood friend, my ex-girlfriend, each voice spurring on the terror coiling in my stomach. It seemed like an eternity before the calls faded, replaced by a chilling silence. I didn't dare leave my tent until dawn painted the sky with soft pinks and purples. Emerging from my tent, I found evidence of the nocturnal visitor, tracks leading away from my campsite, too distorted to be human, too wrong to be animal. With a trembling heart, I hastily packed up and left the reservation, vowing never to return. The encounter with what I believe was a skinwalker remains an unsettling memory. I had gone into the reservation a man of disbelief, skeptical of the tales told by the Navajo people, but as I left, a sense of dread was etched into me. My laughter turned to silence, my skepticism into fear. Now, I carry with me a newfound respect for the narratives and warnings of the Navajo tribe, their words echoing a truth I had witnessed firsthand in that chilling encounter on the Utah reservation. I can't tell you with certainty if skinwalkers are real. All I know is what I experienced that night. The terror, the voices, the indescribable figure. It all felt terrifyingly, horrifyingly real to me. And it's an experience I pray I never have to face again. My name is James Jim Harding, and for the last 20 years, Sycamore National Park has been my home. I find solace in the unchanging rhythm of the wild, the whisper of the wind through the trees, the trickle of streams, the rustle of deer in the undergrowth. They're the soundtrack to my existence. I thrive on the predictability, on knowing the exact bend in the river where the otters play, the precise tree where the eagle perches. The ebb and flow of nature have become my clock, my calendar. There's a sense of peace I find here that I've never found among the concrete jungles of the city. I've devoted my life to safeguarding this sanctuary, preserving its beauty for generations to come. I've seen my fair share of the circle of life, but nothing could have prepared me for the sight I stumbled upon during my evening patrol. There, in a clearing bathed in the dim glow of the setting sun, lay a gruesomely mutilated elk carcass. Crimson splattered the foliage, and its innards were strewn about haphazardly. Initially, I chalked it up to a wolf attack, but something was off. The precision of the mutilation was chilling, not the work of nature, but a calculated brutality. As I surveyed the scene, 
A sound echoed through the wilderness. It wasn't the usual symphony of the wild, but a terrifying cacophony. Part human scream, part animal growl. A chill ran down my spine. For the first time in two decades, I felt fear in my sanctuary. In the days following the discovery, my familiar haven turned foreign. Landmarks I knew by heart seemed misplaced. My trusty compass spun aimlessly, and my usually reliable map seemed like a caricature of the forest I knew. I couldn't shake off a nagging feeling of being watched, an omnipresent gaze following me through the thickets and over the streams. I felt like a trespasser, a stranger in my home. The predictability that once soothed me had vanished. Fear gripped me as I realized that I was lost in the very wilderness that I knew like the back of my hand. Despite my years of wilderness training, a sense of dread persisted. I would shout into the wind and moments later hear a distorted echo of my own voice coming from a different direction. I saw tracks that looked uncannily like my boots, but leading me in circles. The woodland creatures I've shared this forest with started to show a different behavior, their eyes reflecting my image, creating an eerie sense of deja vu. One day I crossed paths with the local Native American tribe's elder. I shared my experiences with him. His face turned ashen, and he began to tell me about the Skinwalker, a malevolent entity known to mimic any creature it encountered. His words sent chills down my spine, adding a mythical weight to the uncanny occurrences. The Skinwalker was no longer a legend to me, it was my living nightmare. The line between days and nights blurred, and my encounters with the entity increased. Its tricks became more devious, its mimicry more perfect. My sanity teetered on the edge, my reflection mirrored in the Skinwalker's eyes, a twisted caricature of my fear. Exhaustion seeped into my bones, but there was no room for rest. The Skinwalker's psychological warfare reached fever pitch. The forest had become a terrifying game of survival. Each rustle of leaves, each broken twig, sent adrenaline pumping through my veins. I was the prey in a chase I never signed up for. The Skinwalker was not just a creature stalking me, it had become a mirror reflecting my deepest fears. I grappled with my sanity, torn between the grim reality and the distorted reflections of my mind. The fear that I had successfully pushed to the corners of my consciousness surfaced, and I found myself fighting an internal and external battle. I woke one morning with newfound resolve. I decided to switch roles. No longer would I be the hunted. Instead, I would become the hunter. With my intimate knowledge of the forest and the survival skills honed over years, I began to lay traps, each one carefully crafted to ensnare the skinwalker. The confrontation came on a moonlit night. It was not like the previous encounters. This time, I was ready. I had spent days preparing for this. Days spent tracking the skinwalker and laying traps. It was a clash of wills, a test of my courage, cunning and humanity against the entity that mirrored my worst fears. Battered and bruised, I finally found my way out of the wilderness. The sight of the ranger station filled me with an indescribable sense of relief. I was scarred, both physically and psychologically, but I had survived. The wilderness I loved had shown me a terrifying face, and I knew I would never look at it the same way again. Life beyond the forest resumed, but a piece of me remained in the wilderness. Every rustle of leaves, every echo in the silence reminded me of the skinwalker. The feeling of being watched lingered. I had escaped the forest, but could I ever escape the fear? The wilderness had been my home, my sanctuary, but it was now a constant reminder of the mirrored terror I had faced, my own echoed fears. Every morning I'd wake up to the monotonous blare of my alarm clock, the same droning sound that had become my less than pleasant herald to another day in the concrete jungle. My name is John Riley, and my life had become a seemingly endless cycle of spreadsheets, staff meetings, and lukewarm coffee. My apartment, my office, the streets I walked daily, they had all become nothing more than the bars of my urban prison. I felt trapped, confined by the rigid structures and relentless schedules of city life. There was no room for spontaneity, no space for the unexpected. I craved the unpredictable, the unexplored, the wild. So I decided to make a change, a substantial one. I sought out the one place I felt could truly offer me the solitude and freedom I craved, the vast, untamed wilderness of Utah. I had always been drawn to the outdoors, finding solace in the rhythm of nature, 
its inherent chaos, and yet undeniable order. The city had none of that. Its order was man-made, sterile, and monotonous. I yearned for the raw, untamed order of the wild, the sort that made your heart beat with its primitive intensity. My decision was met with surprise by my colleagues. The idea of leaving the comfort of air conditioning and Wi-Fi for the unpredictability of the outdoors was alien to them. They couldn't fathom why anyone would choose isolation over society, serenity over speed, or nature over technology. As I handed in my leave of absence, my boss looked at me as if I'd grown an extra head. His puzzled look, however, didn't deter me. I was resolved. The yearning for a break from my urban prison, to taste the freedom of the wild, was like a fire within me, a passion I hadn't felt in years. In my small, cluttered apartment, I packed my gear, each piece a promise of the adventure to come. My boots, worn and comfortable. My backpack, sturdy and reliable. A tent, sleeping bag, compass, maps, and provisions. I felt a sense of exhilaration I hadn't experienced in years. As I booked my ticket, a one-way ride to freedom, I couldn't help but feel a sense of trepidation. I was stepping into the unknown, leaving my familiar if stifling life for something wholly different. It was a risk, and I knew it, but without risk, there is no reward. And so, armed with nothing more than my resolve and a backpack full of camping gear, I set out for the wild, open landscapes of Utah. Little did I know, my quest for liberation and solitude would take me deeper into the wilderness than I could ever imagine, into the realm of ancient folklore and unsettling encounters. As my taxi pulled away from the familiarity of my apartment building, I looked back one last time. This urban prison, my home for so long, was no longer my reality. I was heading into the wilderness, leaving the known for the unknown, ready for whatever lay ahead. Little did I know just how much the unknown was waiting for me. The first sight of Utah was a breath of fresh air. The natural beauty that unfurled before me was like a scene from a painting. Red rock formations rose high, bathed in hues of orange, pink, and red. Their jagged edges pierced the sky, standing in stark contrast to the clear blue horizon. Far from the monochrome world of my city life, the vibrancy of Utah was spellbinding. I journeyed deeper into the land, traveling to the heart of a Native American reservation. The locals welcomed me with a mix of curiosity and warmth, their faces etching a lifetime of stories. It felt like stepping back in time, a stark contrast from the impersonal city bustle I had left behind. My campsite was a secluded spot, a quiet alcove guarded by towering canyon walls and sheltered by gnarled old trees. As I set up my tent and unrolled my sleeping bag, the reality of my new life started to sink in. The simple tasks of surviving in the wilderness brought a sense of satisfaction a primal joy I'd never experienced in the confines of my urban prison. With the camp set up, I decided to explore my surroundings. The landscape was a marvel of natural architecture, an orchestration of stone, wind, and time. The imposing canyons echoed stories of an ancient past, their silence speaking volumes to those who cared to listen. I discovered footprints in the sand, remnants of a coyote or perhaps a bobcat. I found a stream, its waters clear and cold, teeming with fish that darted under the dappled sunlight. A squirrel watched me from a distance, its eyes bright and curious, the twitch of its tail revealing its wariness. As the sun began to set, the sky transformed into a tapestry of colors, the setting sun casting long shadows across the land. I watched in silent awe as the tranquility of the wilderness enveloped me. The isolation I had sought was a welcome friend not a lonesome foe. I cooked my first meal over a fire, the simple act a celebration of my independence from civilization. The crackling flames, the scent of burning wood, and the taste of food cooked in the open air were sensory delights. As darkness fell, the sky revealed its final masterpiece, a blanket of stars stretching as far as the eye could see. The city's neon lights had never offered such a spectacle. The howl of a distant wolf was my lullaby as I crawled into my sleeping bag, exhaustion pulling me into a deep sleep. I was alone, miles from civilization, surrounded by the raw beauty of nature. I was far from my urban prison, far from the noise, the haste, and the artificial lights. I had traded the clattering keyboards for chirping crickets, 
the traffic's honking horns for the wind's gentle whispers, the skyscrapers for towering canyons. I had embarked on my journey into the wilderness, eagerly embracing the allure of the untamed. As I drifted off to sleep under the open sky, I felt an unprecedented peace. Yet in the quiet of the night, a strange sensation lingered at the edge of my consciousness, a primal warning that my journey into the wilderness had only just begun. I was yet to face the challenges that lay hidden within the allure of the wild, within the echoes of an ancient folklore that was interwoven with the land I had chosen to call home. The morning sunlight filtered through the trees, casting dappled patterns on my tent. I awoke to the songs of the birds, the soft rustling of the leaves, and the delicate chill of the morning air. It was a stark contrast to the harsh alarm that once dictated the start of my day. After a simple breakfast, I decided to venture into the local settlement. The community was small, their homes a beautiful blend of traditional design and modern functionality. The locals greeted me with friendly smiles, their eyes reflecting the warmth of their hearts. One of the elders, a man named Tahoma, welcomed me into his home. His face was a roadmap of years lived, every wrinkle etching a tale of his journey. His eyes sparkled with wisdom. His voice was gentle yet commanding, a reflection of his years and status. As we sat together, he spoke of his ancestors, of the traditions that were the bedrock of their community. He wove tales of brave warriors, wise shamans, and the spirit world that existed parallel to our own. His words painted vivid pictures, bringing the rich history and culture of his people to life. But it was when he spoke of the skinwalker that the room grew quiet. His eyes took on a serious glint, and his voice dropped to a whisper. He explained that the skinwalker was not just a tale to scare children, but a part of their mythology, a shapeshifter, a harbinger of ill fortune, capable of mimicking any creature it encountered. He warned me not to venture into the wilderness at night, to respect the land and the spirits that resided there. The desert is a living entity, a keeper of ancient secrets. Disrespect it, and it will show you its wrath, he cautioned. As I left his home, his words echoed in my mind. I found myself grappling with a mix of fascination and skepticism. I was a man of logic, and yet something about Tahoma's words struck a chord within me. Was it the sincerity in his voice, the seriousness in his gaze, or was it the wilderness itself, its untouched beauty challenging my belief? My encounter with Tahoma changed my perspective on my journey. It was no longer just a break from my urban prison, but a journey into an ancient culture, its wisdom woven into the land itself. The wilderness now held a deeper allure, an ancient mystery waiting to be unraveled. That night, as I lay in my tent, the sounds of the wilderness around me, I found myself revisiting Tahoma's words. The tales of the skinwalker, of its shape-shifting abilities, its dark presence, were hard to shake off. They mingled with the sounds of the night, the rustling leaves, the distant hoot of an owl, the crackling of my fire, creating an orchestra of uncertainty. As sleep beckoned, I made a decision. I would heed Tahoma's advice, respect the land and its spirits, stick to the day for my explorations. Little did I know then that the echoes of the ancients were more than just tales. They were the whispers of the land, a warning and a guide, an omen of what lay ahead. Daybreak greeted me with its soft hues of pink and orange, casting long shadows across the wilderness. I began my day with a newfound respect for the land. After breakfast, I decided to hike deeper into the canyon, drawn by the allure of the unexplored. I moved through the wilderness with an explorer's curiosity, taking in the towering rock formations, the beautiful play of sunlight and shadow, the stark contrast between the harsh, rugged beauty and the serene tranquility. Each turn unveiled a new marvel, a hidden spring, a stunning vista, or the footprints of a creature that had passed before me. Despite the silence, I could sense the land was alive, whispering its ancient secrets to those who would listen. I remembered Tahoma's words, his warning about the skinwalker, the land's protector and avenger. Even though I had resolved to heed his advice, the day's beauty and tranquility made it easy to dismiss his words as nothing more than folklore. As the day progressed, I moved further into the canyon, drawn by the breathtaking beauty of the wilderness. It was as if the land was slowly revealing its true self to me. Every step I took, every rock I overturned, a glimpse into its majestic past. 
It was intoxicating, this sense of discovery, of being a part of something bigger than myself. That night I set up camp under a massive rock overhang, the star-studded sky my only companion. I gathered firewood, lit a small fire, and cooked a simple meal. The scent of the burning wood and the sizzling food, coupled with the mesmerizing dance of the flames, was almost therapeutic. The city, with its glaring neon lights and the constant hum of traffic, felt like a distant dream. I remembered my first night in Utah, the sense of awe and peace I had felt. I felt the same serenity now, a sense of peace that stemmed from being one with nature. But there was also an underlying feeling of anticipation, a sense of waiting for something that I couldn't quite place. As I crawled into my sleeping bag, I listened to the nocturnal orchestra, the distant howls, the rustling of the leaves, the gentle whisper of the wind. It was a symphony of the wild, a melody that was both comforting and eerily unsettling. My mind kept circling back to Tahoma's warnings about venturing out at night. Despite my skepticism, I found myself straining to hear any unusual sounds, any indication of the skinwalker's presence. My logical mind dismissed these thoughts as the result of Tahoma's tale, but a part of me couldn't shake off the uneasy feeling. Eventually, I fell into a fitful sleep, my dreams invaded by shadowy figures and eerie animal sounds. Little did I know, my journey had just begun, and the wilderness was ready to reveal its true face, the one that lay hidden behind the facade of serene beauty, the one that echoed Tahoma's haunting tales. The unsettling dreams from the night before lingered as I awoke. The tranquility of the early morning light seemed to mock the dark undertones of my dreams. As I sat by my campfire, sipping on the bitter brew from my camp stove, I tried to shake off the eerie feeling that had descended upon me. My day began like any other. I packed up my camp and set off. The map encompassed my guides as I ventured deeper into the canyon. As I navigated the winding trails and rocky terrain, my mind kept wandering back to my dreams, to the stories of the skinwalker. My trek led me to an old cave, a dark maw in the side of the canyon wall. Curiosity peaked, I decided to investigate. The cool shade of the cave was a welcome relief from the harsh sun. I ventured deeper, the beam from my flashlight piercing the darkness, revealing ancient petroglyphs etched into the stone. As I studied the intricate drawings, I could feel the echo of ancient stories emanating from them. Among the drawings one stood out, a creature, half human, half animal, a chilling depiction of what I believed to be the skinwalker. I felt a shiver run down my spine as I stared at the petroglyph. Suddenly, the cave felt less inviting, its cool darkness more ominous than comforting. It was as if the silent stone was screaming a warning, a reminder of Tahoma's words. As I emerged from the cave, I felt an uneasy sense of being watched. I quickly dismissed it as a byproduct of my growing unease. I told myself it was the solitude, the wilderness playing tricks on my mind. I decided to return to my campsite, a sense of foreboding settling in. My usually serene journey back was marred by a sense of dread. I couldn't shake the feeling of being followed. Every rustle of the leaves, every snap of a twig, seemed amplified, causing me to startle. Upon reaching my campsite, I felt an uncanny relief, the familiar sight of my tent offering a sense of security. As night fell, I couldn't help but feel a certain trepidation. The once comforting solitude of my campsite now felt ominous, the silent wilderness a stark contrast to the cacophony of my thoughts. That night, I lay awake in my tent, alert to every sound. The wind seemed to whisper sinister tales, the rustling leaves a subtle soundtrack to my fear. The peaceful wilderness I had sought now seemed to be cloaked in unseen shadows. Sleep, when it finally came, was fleeting, filled with disturbing dreams and broken by sounds from the wilderness. I woke up with a start, cold sweat trickling down my brow. The peaceful night had transformed into a haunting reality, the wilderness revealing its hidden facets. In the quiet of the night, as fear threatened to consume me, I couldn't help but wonder if I had unknowingly ventured into the territory of the skinwalker. Was it just my imagination, the product of folklore and solitude, or was there an unseen presence, a shadow in the wilderness, waiting, watching? I was about to find out. With the crack of dawn, I emerged from my tent, greeted by the serene wilderness. The morning was in stark contrast to the terror of the previous night. 
the daylight washing away my fear, replacing it with an uncanny calm. But beneath the serenity, a sense of unease lingered. As I began my day, I noticed strange tracks around my campsite. They resembled animal footprints, but there was something unnatural about them, as if they belonged to no creature I knew. A chill ran down my spine, the image of the half-human, half-animal petroglyph flashing in my mind. I tried to shake off the fear, attributing the tracks to a passing wild animal. I decided to spend the day close to my campsite, the strange occurrences causing me to rethink my exploration plans. The bright daylight helped restore some sense of normality, the beauty of the wilderness acting as a balm to my fears. As the day progressed, I tried to focus on the simpler aspects of wilderness living, gathering firewood, fishing in the nearby stream, cooking a hearty meal. Each task helped keep my mind off the mysterious tracks and the sinister whisperings of the night. Yet as darkness fell, the fear returned, amplified by the eerie silence of the night. I found myself jumping at every rustle, every howl, every whisper of the wind. The fire's glow provided little comfort, its flickering light casting long, menacing shadows around my campsite. Sleep was elusive, the events of the past day playing on my mind, keeping me in a state of alertness. I lay awake, listening to the nocturnal orchestra, each sound magnifying my fear. I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, of an unseen presence lurking just outside the firelight. Suddenly, a loud guttural howl echoed through the night, unlike any animal sound I had heard before. My blood ran cold, the sound amplifying my fear, confirming the presence of something unnatural, something sinister in the wilderness. I ventured out of my tent, my flashlight barely cutting through the darkness. My heart pounded in my chest, my breath hitched in fear as I swept the flashlight across the surrounding area. There was nothing but the rustling leaves, the distant echo of the howl, and the silent wilderness staring back at me. Overwhelmed with fear, I decided to retreat to my tent, hoping the safety of its confines would provide some solace. Yet, as I crawled into my sleeping bag, I knew that my journey into the wilderness had taken an unexpected turn, that I was no longer alone. As the hours ticked by, I lay awake, listening to the eerie sounds, the whispers of the wind, and the silent throb of my own fear. I felt the chill of the unseen presence, its sinister whispering seeping into my consciousness, turning my dream of wilderness exploration into a haunting reality. Little did I know that this was just the beginning, that the wilderness had begun revealing its secrets, its ancient protector slowly emerging from the shadows. The tales of the Skinwalker were no longer just folklore, they had become my chilling reality. With the morning sun came a superficial sense of peace. As I exited my tent, the eerie occurrences of the previous night seemed almost like a dream, but the fear still lingered, hidden in the shadows of my mind. I decided to head back to the reservation, seeking the safety of people and civilization. My once comforting solitude was now overshadowed by the unnerving sense of an unseen presence. But before I could pack my things, I heard a sound that made my heart stop. A low, guttural growl coming from the edge of the campsite. Slowly I turned towards the sound, my breath hitching as my worst fears materialized. A creature stood there, its body a grotesque mix of human and animal its eyes glowing with an unnatural light. It was the embodiment of the petroglyph I had seen, the physical manifestation of the Skinwalker tales. The creature looked at me, its gaze cold and chilling, a stark contrast to the warm morning light. Fear rooted me to the spot, my mind racing, heart pounding. I remembered Tahoma's warning, the need to respect the land and its spirits. Slowly, I took a step back, my eyes never leaving the creature. My movement seemed to amuse it, a low growl escaping its throat, as it continued to watch me. With every step I took, the creature mirrored my movements, maintaining the terrifying distance between us. As I retreated further, the creature's gaze never faltered, its eyes holding an eerie intelligence. There was something terrifyingly human in its stare, something that struck a primal chord of fear within me. Finally, I managed to reach the relative safety of my tent quickly gathering my belongings, all while keeping an eye on the creature. Once packed, I left the campsite, the creature watching me leave, 
its haunting presence a chilling reminder of the wilderness's unseen inhabitants. The journey back to the reservation was a blur, my mind consumed by the frightful encounter. As I neared the settlement, I could feel the tension easing from my shoulders, the sight of the houses, the sounds of the community offering a comforting familiarity. But as I entered the reservation, I knew that my journey was far from over. The wilderness, once a symbol of freedom and solitude, had transformed into a haunted realm. The tales of the skinwalker were no longer just stories, they were a part of my reality, a chilling reminder of my frightful encounter. The night's sinister whisperings, the tracks around my campsite, the eerie howls, all coalesced into a terrifying realization. I had ventured into the territory of the Skinwalker, and it had made its presence known. As the reservation's familiar sights surrounded me, I couldn't help but feel an overwhelming sense of relief, but beneath it, a gnawing fear remained. The wilderness was no longer a safe haven, it was the dwelling of the Skinwalker a chilling entity that had stepped out from the shadows of folklore into my frightening reality. Back at the reservation, my terrifying encounter felt surreal, as if it was an episode from a nightmare. But the fear gnawed at me, reminding me that what I had experienced was horrifyingly real. I found Tahoma, his aged features marked by wisdom and serenity. He sat in front of his home, quietly whittling a piece of wood. His calm demeanor felt like a stark contrast to the turmoil inside me. He looked up as I approached, his eyes reflecting a knowing concern. I relayed my encounter to him, the fear and disbelief evident in my voice. As I described the creature, Tahoma's expression remained unchanged. When I finished, he stayed silent for a moment before nodding, his gaze far away. Skinwalker, he finally said, his voice filled with a sorrow I hadn't noticed before. He explained that I had stumbled upon sacred grounds, land protected by the Skinwalker. He told me that my presence, an outsider, had disturbed the balance, awakened the Guardian. But Tahoma didn't berate me. Instead, he offered guidance. He suggested I offer an apology, a sign of respect to the land and the Skinwalker. We must acknowledge the spirits that protect this land, the balance they maintain, he said. His advice gave me hope. Although fearful, I realized I had an opportunity to right my wrong, to restore the balance I had unknowingly disturbed. Tahoma guided me, teaching me the words to say, the gestures to make, emphasizing the importance of sincere remorse. With a newfound resolve, I decided to return to the wilderness, to confront my fear, to apologize to the skinwalker. As I left the reservation, Tahoma's words echoed in my mind, respect is the bridge between man and spirits. Fear if understood, can pave the way. The journey back to my campsite felt different, the fear replaced by a sense of purpose. As I arrived at the deserted site, the earlier terror seemed like a distant memory, replaced by a calm determination. Standing at the edge of the campsite, I began my apology. I spoke in the language Tahoma had taught me, my words an appeal to the skinwalker, an admission of my ignorance, a pledge of respect. As the words left my lips, I felt an uncanny calm descend over the wilderness. It was as if the land was listening, the ancient guardian acknowledging my remorse. But I knew that the apology was just the beginning. I had stepped into the realm of the skinwalker, dared to confront my fear. The wilderness had revealed its guardian, and I had survived the encounter. But the journey was far from over. The tales of the skinwalker, now a chilling part of my reality, would continue to echo in my existence a haunting reminder of the wilderness's unseen side. Following my apology, an uncanny peace filled the wilderness. The sensation was almost tangible, like a thick fog of tranquility enveloping the entire area. For the first time in days, I felt a sense of calm. The fear that had been gnawing at me was finally ebbing away. I spent the day at the campsite, exploring the surroundings with newfound respect. Every rustle of the leaves, Every whisper of the wind seemed to carry a different meaning, a silent acknowledgement from the wilderness. As night fell, I couldn't help but feel a sense of trepidation. The memories of the haunting nights were still fresh, but this time there was a silent acceptance, a mutual respect that seemed to emanate from the land itself. With the darkness, the wilderness came alive with nocturnal sounds, but the ominous undertone was gone. 
There was no chilling howl, no sinister rustling. Instead, the wilderness sang a symphony of natural sounds, the melodies soothing my frayed nerves. As I sat by the fire, staring into the flickering flames, I felt a sense of camaraderie with the wilderness. It was no longer a terrifying entity hiding a fearsome guardian. Instead, it felt like a living being, its rhythms echoing the heartbeat of the ancient land. That night, sleep came easily. The dreams were peaceful, devoid of any haunting apparitions. I awoke to the chirping of birds and the rustling of leaves, the morning sun casting a golden glow over the wilderness. The tranquility was overwhelming, a stark contrast to the eerie dread from the days before. The wilderness had accepted my apology, its guardian choosing to let me be. As I broke camp, I couldn't help but feel a strange kinship with the land. My journey had taken an unexpected turn, leading me to confront the unseen side of the wilderness, but I had emerged from it, the tales of the skinwalker no longer a fearful encounter, but a lesson in respect and understanding. As I journeyed back to the reservation, I reflected on my encounter. I realized that the skinwalker was not just a guardian. It was an embodiment of the land, a symbol of the delicate balance between humans and nature. I had ventured into its realm as an outsider, disturbing the harmony, but my sincere apology had mended the rift, proving that respect was indeed the bridge between man and spirits. My return to the reservation was marked with a sense of accomplishment. I had faced my fears, confronted the skinwalker, and survived. I was no longer the same man who had ventured into the wilderness seeking solitude. I had evolved, the wilderness and its guardian shaping my journey in ways I never imagined. As I met Tahoma, his eyes reflected a quiet understanding. He nodded at me, his actions speaking volumes. I had passed the test the wilderness had thrown at me, earning the respect of its guardian and its people. I had entered the realm of the skinwalker and emerged from it, my tale echoing in the wilderness, a haunting melody in the symphony of the land. In the following days, life at the reservation fell into a familiar rhythm. I spent my time learning about their customs, their relationship with the land, and their understanding of the unseen world. Tahoma became a mentor, guiding me through the lessons the wilderness had to teach. One evening as we sat around a campfire, Tahoma suggested a return to the wilderness. This time, not as an outsider, but as someone who understood the delicate balance that existed between man and nature. His proposal was surprising considering my past encounters, but something within me resonated with the idea. With Tahoma's guidance, we prepared for the journey, packing minimal belongings, acknowledging the land before stepping into the wilderness. As we journeyed through the trails, I had walked alone, a sense of belonging washed over me. I was no longer an intruder, I was a part of this vast tapestry of life. Upon reaching the sacred ground, I felt a wave of tranquility, a silent greeting from the unseen guardian. We set up camp under a clear, starlit sky, the celestial bodies casting an ethereal glow on the landscape. The wilderness, once a source of terror, was now offering solace. That night, as we sat around the fire, Tahoma began a chant, a sacred melody that was an homage to the spirits of the land. His voice echoed through the silent night, intertwining with the soft rustle of the wind and the crackling of the fire. It was an unforgettable moment, the human voice and natural symphony merging into one. Suddenly, an answering howl echoed in the night, the familiar chilling sound that I had once feared. This time, however, it did not bring terror, but a sense of acknowledgement. It was the skinwalker, responding to Tahoma's chant, accepting our presence. The rest of the night was peaceful, the eerie incidents of my previous visits absent. In the morning, as we prepared to leave, we found a set of tracks circling our campsite. But unlike last time, these were not a warning but a sign of the skinwalker's silent vigil, its acceptance of our respectful presence. Upon returning to the reservation, I felt a sense of fulfillment, a newfound respect for the land and its guardian. My encounter with the skinwalker had become a defining part of my journey, shaping my understanding of the unseen world. As days turned into weeks, the story of my encounter spread throughout the reservation, transforming from a chilling encounter to a tale of understanding and respect. I had crossed paths with the skinwalker, disturbed the balance of the sacred land, but had learned to rectify my ignorance. 
My tale served as a reminder to the people and myself of the importance of respecting the unseen guardians of nature. The fear I had once felt was replaced with respect and an understanding of the essential balance between man and the spiritual world. The encounter with the skinwalker was no longer a terror-inducing memory, but a blessing, a lesson etched in the annals of the wilderness. My days at the reservation turned into weeks, and before I knew it, months had passed. I had become a part of the community, my story serving as a bridge between me and the people of the land. The fear that had initially shrouded my encounter with the skinwalker had faded, replaced by understanding and respect. I spent my days learning from Tahoma, understanding the ways of the land, the respect it demanded, and the balance it maintained. His teachings were invaluable, giving me a deeper insight into the spiritual realm that coexisted with the natural world. One day, Tahoma suggested I journey into the wilderness alone, to connect with the land, to understand the symbiotic relationship that existed between it and its inhabitants. Though I was apprehensive, remembering my past encounters, I knew it was a necessary step. So I ventured into the wilderness, feeling a strange sense of homecoming. The forest was no longer a strange, terrifying entity, but a familiar friend. I spent the day exploring, each rustle of leaves, each whisper of wind carrying a story of the land. As night fell, I set up camp, building a fire against the chilling night air. As I sat by the crackling flames, the wilderness around me seemed to hum with life. Suddenly I heard a distant howl, the signature call of the skinwalker. My heart pounded, but it wasn't out of fear. Instead, I felt a sense of kinship, of mutual respect. Morning came with the melody of chirping birds, the sun casting a golden glow over the forest. As I packed my belongings, I noticed a fresh set of tracks circling my campsite. The skinwalker had paid a visit, a silent acknowledgement of our coexistence. I smiled, feeling a sense of belonging. Back at the reservation, I shared my experience with Tahoma. He listened quietly, a satisfied smile on his face. You've understood, he simply said. His approval filled me with a sense of accomplishment, proof of my journey from being an ignorant outsider to a respectful cohabitant. As my time at the reservation drew to an end, I knew I was leaving with more than just a frightening tale. I was taking back lessons from the wilderness, a deeper understanding of the delicate balance between man and nature. My encounter with the skinwalker was no longer a chilling incident, but a transformative experience. It had opened my eyes to the unseen world, teaching me the importance of respect and understanding. I had arrived at the reservation an outsider, ignorant of the land and its guardians, but I was leaving as a part of it, my story forever entwined with the tales of the wilderness. The skinwalker, the guardian of the land, had become a mentor, its encounter a lesson in humility and respect. As I packed my belongings, ready to leave, I couldn't help but feel grateful. My terrifying encounter had turned into a journey of understanding, my story becoming a chapter in the Book of the Wilderness. As I left the reservation, the people gathered to bid farewell. Tahoma was at the forefront, his wise gaze conveying a silent message of pride. I had entered their world as an ignorant outsider, yet now I was leaving as a respected friend. The drive back to the city was a journey of reflection. As I left the reservation behind, the wilderness seemed to bid a silent goodbye, the trees whispering a soft farewell. The rustling leaves seemed to echo the tale of my journey, carrying it across the vast expanse of the land. My life in the city resumed, yet everything felt different. The echo of the wilderness rang in my ears, the teachings of Tahoma resonated in my actions, and the encounter with the skinwalker shaped my perspective. I had ventured into the wilderness seeking solitude, but I had emerged with more than just a terrifying tale. I had gained an understanding of the unseen world, of the delicate balance between humans and nature. I found myself narrating my experience to those around me. Initially, the mention of the skinwalker drew gasps of fear and disbelief. But as I continued, explaining the lessons I had learned, the respect I had gained, and the balance I had disturbed and subsequently restored, their perspectives began to shift. My tale became more than just a horror story. It turned into a reminder of our responsibility towards nature and its unseen guardians. It underscored the importance of understanding and respecting the unseen world. 
of acknowledging our role as mere inhabitants in the vast tapestry of life. As days turned into weeks and then months, my life continued, forever marked by my encounter with the Skinwalker. I found myself drawn to nature, a silent pull that led me to parks and reserves, each visit a chance to connect with the land, a reminder of the lessons I had learned in the wilderness. In my quiet moments, I found myself reflecting on my journey. The terrifying encounter with the Skinwalker had started it all, leading to a tale that echoed across my life and those around me. The Skinwalker, once a source of terror, had become a symbol of wisdom, a guardian of the land I had learned to respect. As I end my tale, the memory of the wilderness and its guardian feels fresh, the lessons invaluable. I'm forever marked by my journey, my tale an echo in the wilderness, my encounter with the Skinwalker a chapter in my life. But this story isn't just mine anymore. It now belongs to everyone who hears it, a reminder of the unseen world, of the guardians of the wilderness, and of the balance between man and nature. Every rustling leaf, every whispering wind, every distant howl echoes this tale, carrying it across time and space, an eternal reminder of the encounter with the Skinwalker. The Skinwalker, a symbol of the wilderness, is no longer a fearsome beast but a guardian, a teacher, its tale forever echoing in the annals of the wilderness, my life, and the lives of those who hear this story.